Secret math power. That's right. Secret math power. In this video, I'm gonna give you a strategy that you can use to get better at mathematics. And you can apply this to anything. Let me just start with a, a brief story. When I was an undergrad, I was pretty good. I wasn't the top student every time, but I always tried to be the best. That's how I did well. I would always walk into every class and say, I'm going to get the highest grade in this class. I want it to be number one. And the reason I did that, the reason I wanted to be number one is because I told myself that this was the one time in my life that I was going to be in college, right? This is the one time in my life I was going to be taking that class. For example, if you are in college algebra, let's say, this is the one time in your life that you're in college algebra. I mean, assuming everything goes well and you, know, you pass the course and all that, but under normal circumstances, this is it, right? This is your one shot. 20 years from now, you won't be in college algebra. So do you want to have a good experience? Do you want to get a good grade? Or do you want to get a bad grade, right? I mean, make it count, right? This is the one shot, you have one shot. You know, on your first test, that's, that's the one test you're taking. On your second test, that's the only shot you have on that second test. So every experience counts. It, it makes a difference, it's your one shot. So I thought, I don't wanna mess this up. So I'm gonna do my best so that in 20 years, I can look back and say, hey, I don't have any regrets because I gave it 100%. So by trying to be the best, by trying to get the highest grade in the class every time, I would basically eliminate that regret because it would force me to work extremely hard, right? If, if you're trying to get an A on a test, you study pretty hard. But if you're trying to be the top student in the class, you study extra hard because it's not just about getting an A, it's about getting a perfect score. So you take it to the next level. So I did that throughout my entire undergraduate degree. And sometimes I got the top score. I remember in differential equations, I had a perfect score on, I think, every single test. And sometimes I didn't do so well. In some, in some classes I got Bs and I ended up, I think, with one C plus in college. It wasn't a math class. Fast forward to graduate school, I was average. So here I am. This person who is, you know, kind of full of himself. I mean, I wasn't really full of myself, but I was used to getting really good grades and used to being near the top. And I got to graduate school and I was surrounded by people who were better than me. I'm getting goosebumps because some of them are really cool. You, you know, graduate school is this experience where you're surrounded by people from all over the world. There was a guy from Greece, uh, this person from Italy, people from China, uh, from Korea, Vietnam, India. We had a prince uh, from Saudi Arabia. I mean, people from all over the world. Graduate school is such a diverse experience and you're surrounded by people who are brilliant. I mean, brilliant. And so what does that do? It takes a person who is used to being near the top and all of a sudden they're average and they're just like everyone else. It's a humbling experience. But what does that do for you? It makes you focus on survival. So I no longer tried to be the top student. I just tried to make it. <laughs> you know, I mean, you can, you can still try, but it's so hard and everyone else is so good that you're kind of just like struggling to keep up. I remember I had this friend, I won't mention his name. I, I don't know where he is today. And one day we were in the mathematics library and we were studying, it was like this dungeon underground. And we were doing homework together and we both started on the first assignment, on the first problem. And we both worked through them and I was like, okay, I'm on number two now. He was on number five. So I was on number two, he was on number five. He was just blowing through it, blowing through it. He was brilliant. And I thought, wow, this guy is really good. I have never in my life studied mathematics with someone who is this good. And I thought, well, what can I do about it? Nothing. I can only try to get better. And I discovered, you know, over the years, you know, semester after semester, that I was able to catch up to a lot of the better students. So they weren't really superhuman. They were just better at math. 
But the point is, I was surrounded by people who were better than me. And that's the secret power I want to talk about. If you are trying to learn math and you're struggling, maybe you're doing all the right things, you're doing your homework, you're going to office hours, you're going over the review, you're taking notes, you're doing everything and you're still struggling, there's one thing you can do that's going to be a game changer. And that's to surround yourself with people who are better than you. And then when you do that, what you're basically doing is you're, you're putting yourself in a position where you're no longer you know, near the top. You're average or perhaps below average. And your goal now is to basically learn from these people and catch up. And I did that. You know, I had a friend, another friend, who was very slow at working out math problems. He would, he would work very, very slow. I always thought of him as a careful thinker. He was a great person. I love the guy. I don't know where he is today, but a really nice person. And I have always been a person that goes like a million miles an hour, really, really quick, really quick at math, really quick at figuring out integrals and proving things. I was always pretty quick. He was also quick, I guess, but he would work slower. So it took him longer to work things out. So he thought about things more carefully. And so by working with him, I kind of learned to slow down and slow down my thinking and think a little bit more carefully about what I was working on. So I learned from him. I learned from someone who was genuinely a lot better than I was. He was much better at math than me. Um, he was better at proving things, probably more intelligent. I mean, just brilliant, right? And that's how you grow. That's how you grow. So if you're in college or if you're in high school, what you can do today to apply this strategy, this, this secret math power, is form study groups with people who are better, with people who are better. And it takes a little bit of guts to do it. You know, I remember I had this student once in differential equations. I, I won't mention his name. If he's watching this video, hello. Uh, but he doesn't know who he, who, yeah, yeah. And uh, he, he wasn't very good at math, but he was really fun to have in class. And after class, uh, one day he, he stood up and he said, hey, does anyone want to form a study group? I'm going to go down to the library. And he just, you know, said it out loud. And everyone looks at him and two or three people said, yeah, sure. Okay, I'll go with you, man. And right there like that, boom, he formed a study group. And he managed to pick up some of the top students in the class. And that helped him. He started studying with these really, really good students after class every day. And he was able to pass my class because of that. So not because... He did the homework or he said, I think it's because he surrounded himself with these people and that, that gives him inspiration, right? When you surround yourself with people who are working hard, you're going to work hard. When you surround yourself with people who are good at mathematics, you are going to become better at mathematics. So whatever you're trying to do in life, it doesn't necessarily just apply to math. If you're trying to get better at something, surround yourself with people who are good at that thing. You know, this is one of the reasons why it does kind of matter where you go to school. I think if you're planning on going to graduate school, it doesn't matter too much where you go for your undergrad. It does matter, but you know, just do the best you can. I know it's hard to get into MIT. It's hard to get into Harvard, right? So get into wherever you can go. But at some point you want to surround yourself with people who are good, whether it be a workplace, anything. Surround yourself with the best and it helps you grow tremendously, tremendously. Anyways, if you found any value in this content, feel free to hit subscribe. Also, before I forget, if you want to learn math, I do have courses. They're on my website, mathsorcerer.com or freemathvids.com. Um, just click the links there and they'll take you to the Udemy platform. Um, they're on Udemy, but if you use my links, it helps me. Plus, I've lowered the prices, so you'll always get a low price if you use my links. The key takeaway to this video is that the secret math power or the secret life power that you can harness and use, and you can apply this to everything in your life, is to always try to surround yourself with the best people. You know, if, if you're hanging out with people who are really good at math and, you know, just brilliant people, chances are you're going to gravitate towards that. So who you hang out with makes a big difference in your life. Okay, makes a big difference. Anyways, stay strong. Keep doing mathematics.